Hey, hey, hey. What is up, Facebook and YouTube? Thank you guys so much for joining us today. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon from wherever you are joining us. Um, today's a pretty cool, fun, uh, you know, new thing we're doing in a special stream um, because today I'm going to be introducing you to the latest addition to the Line 6 product specialist team, that being uh, Chris Payar. And so I'm just going to bring Chris on into the stream. And here we go here. And so once he gets his camera going, um, yeah, here he is. Chris, what's hey, up, man? Hey, Nick, I'm doing good. How are you? Doing well, doing well. Thank you so much for joining us today. And, um, you know, everyone, uh, you know, this is the latest addition to the Line 6 product specialist team. Uh, Chris is right out of Canada, but, you know, enough of me talking. Um, I'm just going to turn it over to you. Chris, why don't you introduce yourself to everyone and, you know, let us know who you are. Give us a little bit about yourself. Awesome. So, hey, everyone. Hope everyone's doing well. I'm Chris Bayer. I'm based in the province of Quebec, Canada. Um, I've been playing guitar for more than half of my life now. Been playing in bands, touring, doing recording sessions for artists. So I've been uh, playing my share. Um, and now I'm since last summer of 2022, I've been part of Yamaha Canada Music's team as a product specialist. So um, we're basically the equivalent to Nick. Well, I'm basically the equivalent to Nick, but in Canada. So um, if anyone in Canada has questions for their Line 6 products or needs support, they're probably going to talk with me. Um, so I'm, I'm super happy to be here and I hope we'll, uh, we'll just keep on having fun together. Oh, definitely, man. And for everyone watching and even watching later, you know, uh, Chris is going to be joining me and uh, our uh, and other product specialist, Tony Campanovo. Looks like he's in the chats today on the uh, YouTube side. So thank you, Tony, for, uh, you know, being in, uh, being our boots on the ground for any questions that come up. And um, so, yeah, so Chris and I and, and Tony as well, we'll be doing these streams in tandem for a little while. And then you'll just be seeing Chris as well. And Chris, uh, you know, being, you know, the native to Canada, I assume you, you speak French, right? I do. So awesome. if, if anyone has questions in French, I'll be more than happy to help. Beautiful, beautiful. I'm sure our French speaking uh, viewers will love that as well. Sure. And, um, and so great, man. Well, thank you so much again for joining today. Uh, really, what our subject is today, everyone, is, uh, you know, the new cab engine that we have here in uh, the new 3.50 firmware. And so Chris and I both have our screens going right here. Um, so what we can do, I'm not sure if, uh, oh yeah, I could just, you know, this is a, this is a learning, a learning curve for both of us here. Cause this is the first time we've ever, you know, done a stream where we have more than one person in the stream. So this is cool. So yeah, um, you know, I thought it would be cool to just kind of touch base on what we're looking at here. Um, you know, and again, for our viewers, if there's any questions you have about any current Line 6 products that doesn't pertain to cabinets, um, you know, feel free to you know, just ask your questions and Chris, Tony or I will be you know, happy to answer them. But the placeholder for today is the new cab engine in 3.50. Uh, 3 um, Chris and I thought it would, be, it would be cool to kind of just go over, you know, our go-tos, um, our favorite mic and cabinet combinations. Um, if you've spent some time with uh, the new 3.50 update, you'll see that, you know, you can move the mics around, especially in HX Edit, you can move the mics around in this 3D space and just kind of really sculpt your sound. And to just kind of, you know, reiterate here, you know, every time you move a microphone in its distance, it's a new impulse response. So if you can imagine thousands upon thousands of impulses, impulse responses were captured, um, you know, there, there's no faking uh, the correlation between um, positionings and distances and angles with our modeling. If you move it just a little bit like I did right now, that's a new impulse response. So very cool stuff. Um, Chris, I'm going to turn it over to you. Uh, you know, cause everyone here has heard, seen me over the years, a million times do this thing. So I thought, you know, why don't you show us, uh, your kind of go to's your favorite mic combinations. Um, you know, just show us what you got over there. Of course, of course. 
So I'm going to start with a, a preset with the, the new uh, vitriol amp that was included in the newest update, the 3.5. Uh, I've got it um, mic'd with a uh, Mesa V30 cabinet with uh, what I think is a pretty, pretty classic mic combination. So it's a uh, 57 with a 121. So something that is commonly found in studios. Uh, basically, it's kind of the best of both worlds. The 121 is really more uh, round sounding, smooth in the mids, not too bright. And then the SM57 is bringing that brightness. Uh, so the, the two mixed together, uh, in complete sound, a, a really full frequency sound. So uh, here it is. <laughs> So it's not too harsh, it's got plenty of bass, and, and because of the mids, you're still going to be able to hear yourself in a mix. So something like that is pretty classic, and then obviously the combination of um, the vitriol amp and a Mesa cabinet, are it, it's just a classic, it's been proven over and over again. Um, another example would be this preset here that I made based on the SX A15 amp, which is a very shiny kind of bright amp, and I paired it with a 110 um, cabinet with a 160 mic and a 4, uh, 414. So once again, um, two mics that are kind of bright, but together they, they, they do pair well, uh, they, they complete one another uh, it makes for kind of a smoother sound than, than the previous preset so it's it's really on the fatter kind of side so really more uh, vintage sounding classic so for for the rock lovers and and everything uh, cleaner than that just a great sounding preset all around so those are, are two uh, classics that I use very, very often. No, that's awesome, man. That tone sounds super thick. And one thing about me, especially with the higher gain stuff, um, you know, I think the, uh, it, it, I, I just like that darker mid range sound. Um, again, with these like higher gain sounding amps and that's such a thick sound you got going over there. I really dig it. Yeah, well, I always try to think, um, I always try to build my presets around a, a, a full mix, right? I want something that's going to stand out, but not too much in the sense that it's going to be aggressive. So I try to make them very uh, smoother in the high frequencies and then a lot of uh, mids and a bit of bottom as well. So I, I get the feel on stage, but then it's not, as I said, aggressive. Oh, for sure. For sure. And, um, oh, let's see here, Chris, uh, Chris we just got, um, one of our first questions in, um, from YouTube exactly. What is the recommended speaker mode on the line six power cap plus when connected through, um, line six, let's see, I'm going to pull that up on the screen. So I'm assuming Zach, um, is talking about, uh, the, uh, the line six link, um, which is an AES EBU connection, uh, digital connection from Helix directly to your power cab. So the recommended speaker mode, um, you know, Zach, uh, I, I would just say, you know, flat, full range, you know, FRFR, um, you know, this way you can get any speaker sound, um, any amp sound directly through your power cab. And you don't have to worry about any additional color. Um, you know, pretty much what you put in is what you're going to get out. And so I, I would recommend flat if you want to, you know, go through the array of amps and cabs. Um, you know, wouldn't you agree, Chris? I 100% agree, especially if you plan on using the newer cabinets in Helix, because if you were to use an IR or speaker model in power cab at the same time, it would make for a very dark and muddy sound, which can work for some people, but it's not ideal in a way. So um, yeah, run it 100% flat, uh, and then you'll be able to use every new cab that is included in, in, in Helix. That's, that would be perfect. 
Perfect. Yeah. Great. Awesome. Yep. Much agreed. Um, so Zach, hopefully that helps you out. Um, you know, I see you, uh, you put here in the chat as well when using Helix 3.5, that is. So really, you know, these cabs just, you know, it's a new cab engine built from the ground up. So we have these amazing impulse responses that are able, able to give us, you know, wherever you move that mic, that impulse response is there. So um, whether you're using 3.5 or the legacy cabs prior to 3.5, I think running it in flat mode um, is the way to go. Um, let's see, we have a Constantine from YouTube come in. I love 57 on the cab edge and a 121 in the center. This is amazing. <laughs> I agree, look, that's pretty much what you were doing, right, Chris? Exactly, and it, it's, once again, it's been, uh, it's a combination of microphones that has been proven over the times. It's just, um, you're going to find that combination of microphones in most studios nowadays because it, it gives you a really classic sound and it's something that is pretty much mix ready in a way. Uh, it, it's very complimentary for sure. Perfect, awesome. Uh, thank you, Chris. And uh, looks like we have uh, Alexander um, in Facebook. Do the new cabs come for the Pog Go? Um, well, unfortunately, uh, well, not unfortunately, because, you know, the cabs in, you know, the legacy cabs sound great, um, you know, and those are also impulse responses. Uh, we, we've always called them uh, hybrid cabs um, because they still are using impulse responses. But, you know, now there's this new technology where they use they used robots with, you know, attached to microphones. So every little movement they could just type in in their keyboard and then the mics move and then we were able to capture all these impulse responses so you know i don't want to discredit the legacy cabs because they do sound great but unfortunately no alexander the uh, new cabs are not in pod go are they coming in the future i'm honestly not sure but you know how we are over here at line six we are always uh, always innovating and always, you know, listening to our customers. So if that's something you would like to see, you could always check out our uh, idea scale on line6.com, put that in it, you know, it's kind of like Facebook for Helix users, right? You know, you can just kind of vote up what you would like to see in the next product and such. So nope, not for now, but who knows what the future may hold. Thank you, Alexander, for your question. Much appreciated. So, yeah, you know, Chris, I pretty much was, you know, having the same thing going on um, over here. What's funny is I'll just show my screen real quick. Um, you know, I'm using right here a, uh, you know, just a Cali 4 lead and I'm running, you know, I have two cabs here to kind of AB, but my cab, I just have a 57. And then over here we have that 121 ribbon because, you know, you would, I'm sure you can agree the 121 is a very dark microphone, right? Correct. It's it's super dark, gives a lot of lower mids, so you need something bright to pair with it because otherwise it, it's a bit much by itself. Yeah, no, it is. And it, it just gives you this nice, nice tone that... <laughs> You know, because these amps, you know, these especially these higher gain amps, they cut through a mix for sure, but they can be a little harsh on the higher end. So, you know, adding that 121 definitely really, really works. And look, you know, right here for the tone I'm getting, I'm at a distance of about two inches um, on the cap edge. Is that kind of like what you were doing over there, Chris? Um, similar. It really depends per preset for me, to be honest. Um, like that um, V30 cabinet I'm using at the moment, the 121 is at an inch from, from the speaker itself, uh, but I, I play with the position a lot. So my um, 57 is at four inches, so it's past the edge of the cap itself. So I, I really always am kind of playing with those positions. Um, and uh, I, it, it's really dependent on the preset I'm playing on at the moment. But um, I'm always tinkering with that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah, definitely. You know, and that's what's so cool and fun about these um, the, this new cab engine is, you know, especially for tinkerers like us, you know, and, and everyone else watching um, today and so on. Um, we just love to tinker with this stuff. And so now we have even more you know, more stuff to play around with, you know, it's like 
being a kid on Christmas and, you know, getting more toys to play with. <laughs> um, so it looks like we had something else come in from Constantine here. Um, thank you, Constantine, for your question. So he writes, I am trying to match one company's famous impulse response with line six cabs, and I am close, but not. Maybe that company has done some EQ, or maybe I'm just stupid. I doubt that. Um, it's the same cab in the impulse response and line six. Well, um, you know, one thing I can add is, and I'm sure, you know, you can agree, Chris, uh, you know, lots of, lots of vendors out there, own hammer, whoever it may be. Um, when they're capturing an impulse response, nine times out of 10, Chris, wouldn't you say they're probably running, running through EQing and different preamps and stuff right. like that? To totally. So, so for that specific IR, they might be using uh, a different mic than what uh, what is included in our Line 6 cabs. They might be running with some um, outboard hardware studio gear, such as preamps and EQs. So just, just to really um, fine-tune it to, to a way that they like. So uh, a lot of things need to be considered when using IRs, but because the, the people that make them don't always mention that they're using preamps and, and outboard EQs and compressors and stuff like that. So those are all things that will color and affect the, the, the final result. Right, right. You know, and, and who knows if, there, if there's maybe a silent microphone that they never mentioned in the literature. Maybe it's a room mic or, again, you know, preamps, EQing, compression, um, the size of the room that the IR was made in. Because, you know, one thing I can definitely speak to is, you know, with the cabs in line six, when you see the 121 ribbon in front of this, you know, you know, I'm looking at on, on my setup, you know, here, I'm looking at, for example, this 121 in front of a 112 uh, Mesa boogie cab, you see, this is, it's the bare bones. It's literally the mic in front of the cab. And so when you get that from line six modeling, you're not getting any additional color. And the whole idea is you get the bare bones and then you as the player, you add your EQing, your compression and whatever other else color you want to add to your preset. Whereas an impulse response is a curated sound. Um, so that's probably why Constantine, you're not getting 100% to what that vendor has offered. Because in Helix, you may have to add, again, some extra EQing, um, compression, and whatever else it may be. And to add to that, taking a look here, um, you know, I'm using, for this preset, I'm using Dynamic Room, but Dynamic Ambience does a great job on adding room sound. And room sound can really thicken up. Uh, your cabinet sound. Um, wouldn't you agree, Chris? Like adding some room sound can kind of add a new vibe to your speaker sound, correct? A hundred percent. And then uh, another feature that is now uh, included in our new cab engine is the delay between each speakers at the very bottom of the um, editing portion of the cabinets. So if you were to add delay for only one of the two speakers here, it would affect uh, the phase, the, the phase relation between the two and it would make for a different sound. So let's give an example. Now, both of them are at zero milliseconds, but if I were uh, just, let's just, that's it. it's kind of bright, but if I were to just move that delay here, see how from zero to just 0.14, really darken the sound. So that is a, another feature that you could play with that is going to drastically affect the sound that you're getting overall. Perfect. And what's funny is as you started going into um, going into that, Chris, we had a question come in from Brian here. Can you elaborate on how to best use the pan and delay options? And then when you finished, he came back with perfect timing. So Brian, look at that. Great minds think alike, right? So, um, okay. so you you answered a question right before it came in. So that's awesome. So thank you, uh, <laughs> yes, thank you, Brian. Glad we were able to clarify that for you. Um, but as I came in, um, it looks like we had another from YouTube from Victor. Um, thanks to Line 6 for this new cab engine. Till now, I haven't tried any of them. 
thanks to you two guys for making me realize I have this new great tool in my Helix. Well, Victor, thank you so much. Um, you know, that, that, you know, wow, uh, wow moments like that um, make us happy to do what we do. Perfect. So good stuff there. Um, and then Pixelot, uh, he's coming in and all right. Perfect. Perfect. New, uh, new cabs are great as well from Brian. Thank you so much. Um, so awesome. Very, very cool. So love the questions coming in guys. Feel free to keep on sending them in, send them, sending them in. Sorry about that. Um, haven't had my coffee yet. <laughs> so yeah, man, you know, I, you know, you know, these new cab engines are so much fun. Uh, so another thing that I enjoy doing and what I was doing um, here, you know, we were talking about using two different mics, but sometimes you may want to use the same mic on the same cab. And so what's great here in HX edit right here, we have this little uh, cab link option. Now, if you're working on the physical Helix product, you would have to go into global settings and change this. But when you use the editor, it's just a quick click of this little icon here. So the whole idea is that I can change cabinets, but it's going to keep the same. It, it, pretty much if I change this cab, it's going to change the next cab and so on and so forth. So I don't have to do all this clicking and editing. So I have that selected, but what I'm using here is I'm using two of the same mics, but they're in two different positions. Um, you know, a classic uh, guitar player who did this would be uh, what, like Eddie Van Halen and really any other guitar player out there. I think an SM57 um, is a mic we can all agree on is a complete workhorse and probably the one mic we have the most experience with. And so what I'm doing here is I have a uh, 57 off access on this little 45 degree and it's only one inch away. So I'm butted up right to the cap practically. And um, then we, when we look at the other cab, I'm uh, you know, a distance of two, two and a quarter and I'm practically right on the cone right there. And so it gives you a nice, you know, a nice change. You know, if I was to have just two mics pretty much pointed at the cone, it would probably be really brittle. Let's hear that. But then as soon as we, I'll just reload the preset. As soon as we put that microphone on its 45 degree, kind of evens it out. Can you hear that, Chris? Does it sound a little more even when the mic's uh, on, on a 45 degree? A hundred percent. It it really made a, almost a night and day difference with when we, you put it back on axis and, and then right in the middle, it went for, from super bright, almost spanky to, to now way more rounded out and smooth. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So A... <laughs> So that's A, now here's B. Yeah, definitely a smoother sound for sure. And so that's something we didn't have previously in um, the legacy hybrid cabs in Helix. So that makes a huge shift there. Um, you know, and that's something I probably do on all of my marshals. Um, is, have you messed around with that kind of 45 degree, uh, angle with any of your, um, preset building? Oh yeah. Well, for example, the, the preset that I was on right now, my, my vitriol on the Mesa cap, my 57 was at 45 degrees because I really wanted a smoother kind of sound, even because the, the amp itself is super, super bright. So if, if I were to to be straight in the middle and on axis for both, it would be way too bright for my taste at least. Right? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. A nice thick tone and and it's coming well. It's you know, it's it just cut it it cuts through so well. And plus whenever you're doing tones and stuff on a live stream, you know, how many, you know, how many training sessions you and I have done and stuff like that. And so to sound this good still, when we're going through OBS and StreamYard and all this stuff, and it still sounds good, you know, that it, it's, it's just awesome, you know, how well these sound, um, you know, to the future is nay, as they say, right? <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, it's, so it's almost a miracle in a way with all the, the the compression that we get on online videos. It's and for for it to still sound that good, it, it's it's really a cool feature for sure. Yeah, definitely. Now, if um if I would have had this when I was fourteen and fifteen, <laughs> I just <laughs> I would have been over the moon. Um, so as we were going over that, it looks like we had a couple thing a couple things come in the chat. Um, just to call out, it looks like we're at eleven twenty six. So we have a couple minutes left to answer your questions. So feel free to um, send them on in. Um, let's see here. I'm just going to kind of go through uh, our uh, reactions here, um, so everyone could see. You made me so happy here in the Ukraine. Oh wow, we have uh, Constantine in the Ukraine. Um, with 3.5 update, I was in a bad mood when I saw the update. I was in a great mood for so long. You're making more than you think. I'm so happy with this. Well, Constantine, that again, um, what we call wow moments over here at a Yamaha guitar group in Yamaha. Um, that's that's great. That's awesome. Um, let's see here. Picks a lot. Um, love the new cab engine. Redid all of my presets to use it. So much easier to work with and dial in. Great work. Thank you, Picks a lot. Um, Let's see what we got here. Any practical use for a 30 mic? It's too bright for me. Um, what do you have to say about that, Chris? Um, in, in that way, I, I would maybe just use an EQ after um, the cabinet block because it, it's, it's, it's a good mic and it's very good to use in some contexts. So if you, you were to find it just a bit bright for your taste, either just move it really at the edge of the speaker cone itself. So you're going to still get a bright sound because of the mic, but it's going to be way darker than if you were to use it on the edge of the cap instead of the speaker. And then maybe just uh, either put um, an EQ block after your cap block or scroll down here and just adjust your high cut to a lower setting and it's going to account for the added brightness of the microphone itself. So for example, um, Everything is as is, except for the mic change. Now it's going to be a bit brighter. So that's way brighter than it used to be. But if you were to put a high cut at a value where um, actual speakers would cut, it's it's going to be a bit brighter. So it brought a lot of mids. But with the high cut and the movement of, of the mic, the placement of the mic itself, it's um, similar to the preset that I had before, but you have the added uh, spank of the 30 mic. Beautiful. And that's exactly what I was thinking, you know, because so many times when I build presets, you know, unless I have like a really specific sound, you know, before, you know, adding an EQ to me has always been kind of like the last thing I do. Um, if I need it, I'll add it. You know, I never start off. I never work with it. I just, it's, it's my last resort. And what you pointed out using the high and low cuts, um, I think those parameters get overlooked um, by a lot of users. Um, I'm sure you can agree. Uh, I um, totally agree. And then um, actual speakers really... And their um, natural frequency response. So um, when it's not adjusted in, in the cap block, you're basically hearing a full range signal, which we're not used to hearing as guitar players. So using that setting is, is crucial. Yeah, much agreed. Um, like you, you know, and you hit the nail on the head. You know, when we're when you're when you're in the studio, and you know, when you're in the studio and getting your sound mic'd up, you know, like you said, you're never going. It's never full range. It's always tweaked. Yep. Um, there's always EQing and stuff tweaking that sound. So keep that in mind for those watching. Um, you know, and again, you, you, you hit the nail on the head and, um, you know, even Constantine says here, 45 degrees can sometimes give a smoother sound and such, you know, it depends on, you know, the mic and cab as well. But again, like you said, Chris, you know, uh, dive into those high and low cuts, you know, even at an EQ if you need to, because, you know, like Chris said, when you're in a studio and in a recording environment, all this stuff is happening behind the scenes you know it, you you've i've never recorded in a studio where they just thrown a mic in front of the cab and been like we're done <laughs> right <laughs> never never there's you always know? compressors there's always something involved 
Totally, totally much agreed. So keep that in mind, everyone, when you're building your tone that, you know, you're always going to have to fluff it up a bit. Um, you know, there is never a situation where you just throw up a mic, hit the record button, and it sounds amazing. You know, there's always some tweaking to do. But the, this new cab engine sounds so great, you get there much faster than if you were to do that in the traditional world. So, Chris, it looks like we're at 1130 here. I'm just going to, it looks like we had a bunch of stuff come in. So if it's cool with you, maybe we can just uh, go down the list here and then um, finish cool. us finish us out. Um, so here, uh, looks like Brian's coming back in. Um, if you hard pan the cabs, does that carry all the way to the output or do you also have to hard pan the output block? What do you think about that, Nick? Well, what I think, um, you know, since the output block is set to center, whatever you do with your cabinets, you, you, you know, you're never going to have to worry about the output block. The output block is always going to be sending, um, you know, an equal amount of signal to the left or to the right. Once you start messing with the panning on those cabinets, it's automatically going to do that for you. So you don't have to worry about the output block. The only time you would worry about panning the output block is if you want everything going out of the output to be panned left or right. Otherwise, don't even worry about the output block. Do what your you know do your heart's content on panning your panning your amps left or right. Don't even worry about the output block. So you're good there. Um, and then also Brian, I'm also crossing my fingers the matchless cab is being recaptured for a future update. Possibly, you never know. Um, you know is you never know when 3.6 may drop. Um, but and if that may be a part of that update, but um, you know. Stay tuned. So we'll see what's up. Nam's around the corner, so you always know we always have something for someone during Nam. So I'll leave that there. Thank you, Brian, so much for joining today. We highly appreciate it. Um, let's see here, uh, Bernard. Is there any way we can increase the number of IR slots? So we have, um, if I recall, a hundred and thirty, one hundred and twenty-eight um, IR slots. So. No, you can't increase how many IR slots. Um, it, it, of course, speaking to third-party impulse responses that you transfer to your Helix, you can't add more spaces to your, you know, to the to Helix. You know, there's 128 slots. That's all you have. However, you can purchase a power cab, and the power cab on its own can hold 128 uh, impulse responses. So if you pair a power cab with a Helix, you have essentially double the amount of impulse responses you can have. So I could have 128 on my Helix and then I can have a whole other batch of 128 on my power cab. And you can use the power cab remote in your Helix to siphon through those impulse responses. Um, let's see, uh, let's uh, go over to Pixelot. With various tone captures, match options becoming available, does Line 6 plan to in, enhance any enhanced controls for the IR block so we don't have to import so many IRs from third-party sources? Um, so I'm assuming, and um, you can chime in on this one as well, Chris, I'm assuming Pixelot is talking about other brands out there that have... Uh, products that can essentially listen to a tone and kind of match it is that what i'm picking up here you think well f for sure the mention of tone captures and matching would refer to that um any enhanced controls for the ir block may maybe just having more controls over the ir that you would be able to import over uh, in your helix that's kind of what I'm getting for that second part of the question. Um, and it's, it, it's really, if we speak about IRs only, um, it's kind of a hard thing to do because they're made by a third party. But if, if it's regarding the actual cab engine, well, there's other features that may, uh, that we may be able to have in the future for sure, depending on, on how we work them. Right. Agreed. You know, and, you know, when you, 
you know, I've even been asked questions that remind me of this one where, you know, profiling, you know, where there's products out there that can profile an amp. It, you, it can listen to an amp, let's say, and it kind of gets a, uh, you know, a, a sonic image of that amp. And, you know, just to add, you know, line, us at Line 6, we modeled the real thing. Everything is modeled. Um, whereas a profile or a kind of tone match where something listens to something and creates a tone profile from there, um, it, that's essentially filtering in the long run. And so us at Line 6, we don't believe in any of that. We want to give you an exact replication of the real thing. Um, you know, our definition of modeling at Line 6 is, you know, a software recreation of hardware. And you know, we don't cut any corners by, you know, profiling or anything like that. So everything you get is, a, is you know, analog information in a digital workspace. So um, hopefully that kind of answers Pixelot question. Um, you know, if anything, when we look at uh, the new dual IR block, you know, keep in mind, um, you know, if you want to use two IRs uh, from two different manufacturers, you can do, you know, a couple cool things now where you can change, you know, the polarity of, uh, you know, of uh, between the two impulse responses. And, um, you know, you can even adjust the delay and um, again, the polarity and the delay and such. So if you're using impulse responses from two different manufacturers, you can kind of, you know, fine tune them so you don't get any weird phasing and weird articulations between the two. But Pixelot, thank you so much for that question. Um, we highly appreciate it. Um, so look here, uh, the Buckster. I'm using the link switch in dual cabs puts the same speaker on both cabs, but does it do anything else? Is it the same as simply choosing the same speaker on both cabs without the link switch? Pretty much, you know, when we look at, uh, you know, uh, you know, since we have Chris up here, maybe you could show us, um, you know, Chris, when we use that dual link cab switch, pretty much what that's doing for us is if you were to change the cab in the first screen right now, it's going to change the second one, right? Yep. So that's, that's what correct. we see. That's what we see what's going on there. So, so Buckster, that's what it's doing for us. Um, so, or using two single cabs in a split path. So no, um, the dual link uh, cab feature is for the dual cab block. Um, it will not affect two blocks simultaneously. It's just the dual cab block. And you can only use one dual cab block per path. So um, so that's just kind of tied in there. Uh, looks like we're at 11.39. We're going a little over time. So I'm just going to uh, take a quick look down here and finish us out. Um, this looks like it's uh, directed at you, Chris, uh, Victor. Chris, I noticed you split your signal in two outputs. That only work for a stereo output, or can you have a tone effect in a mono output? Well, in my specific purpose well, for, for that preset, it's because sometimes I need to um, record something on the fly or um, use both um, XLR monitoring like I'm doing at the moment and then send a quarter inch out to... Um, a cabinet like a power cab or something or uh, a catalyst or something alike. Uh, so the way I split my signal is that everything before the cab blocks goes to my quarter inch output so I don't get two uh, cabinet simulations on where, whatever I'm, I'm plugging into. And then the XLR gets the cab sim. So I, I get, uh, so both paths uh, get a, a speaker sound in a way. if that makes any sense. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. And then we got another one from Victor. Is there a difference between using an EQ to low and high cut or the cab engine low cut and high cut? Well, I would, they, they pretty much work exactly the same way. The, the only benefit to using, well, the, the most important benefit to using the one in the cab block is that you don't have to add another block to your signal path. So that's that that's going to use less DSP on your helix, in, in which in return is going to allow you to put more effects blocks or anything that you may want. 
Yeah, much agreed. Much agreed. Perfect. And Constantine's chiming in and answering some questions for us. Thank you so much. It looks like Pixelot is following up on our response. Virtual mic angle, distance, etc. for IR block. So, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm not sure uh, if that's something coming up soon. Um, you know, but to do a virtual mic angle and distance on a third party impulse response, Chris, wouldn't you say that would, uh, it's kind of hard to accurately recreate that from an impulse response from a yeah. third party, right? Yeah, because an IR or a tone capture or a tone match is basically a snapshot of what's happening at that specific moment. So um, that's why we, we tend to use full um, modeling instead of, of captures because it gives you the full picture of instead of just giving you a snapshot. Editing a snapshot isn't something that's, well, to my knowledge at least, it isn't something that is really doable. Um, to, to give that effect to an IR, you would have to have to add additional EQ blocks and stuff like that. There, I, I, I haven't seen um, third party IRs that can be edited afterwards. That's well, that's from same. what I've seen, from, from my experience at least. Same, same. You know, I, 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 I personally don't think, you know, I'm sure there's. You know, especially nowadays, there's so much out in the market. I'm sure there's something out there that claims they can do it, but um, I haven't had any experience with it. And I would be curious if if you were to edit a impulse response like that. You know, it's essentially a wave file. So yeah. anything you do to that, you're just going to be adding filtering, EQing, and some articulation on top of it. Um, you know, it's like listening to a song and saying, man, can I virtually move the microphone further away from the singer's mouth or from the guitar player's cabinet? It's just, you know, it, it's faking it, I, I would say, um, but definitely. So, so all good. I'm looking at the, at the comments here. So it looks like we've gone um, about 13 minutes over, but I think a Good way to kind of end us off on a good note is we have Pixelot here saying, welcome, Chris, to the Great Line 6 Helix team. And um, again, thank you, viewers. Thank you, everyone, for chiming in, asking your questions. We've had a lot of fun today. Um, Chris, it was my pleasure to introduce you uh, to the community. Looking forward to doing uh, these more often with you. And um, I'm sure everyone is looking forward to seeing more of you in the future. As I am looking forward to sharing uh, my my love of line six with all of you guys thank you for having me nick oh of course thank you so i'm uh you know thank you again chris much appreciated this was a lot of fun so uh i think our next um stream i'm not sure if it's next week or two weeks from now um but tony campanovo uh, will be up in the stream with you chris um i'm sure you guys have some cool stuff to talk about then but until then everyone thank you so much for joining us today uh you know I'm your product specialist uh, out here in uh, Western uh, Western USA. And then um, signing off, turning it over to you, Chris. Thank you so much, man. Um, take care, everyone. Yeah, take care, everyone. It was a lot of fun, and uh, we'll see you on the next stream. Thanks, guys. Bye.